G'day and welcome back to the latest episode of Tomo's Tune-Offs. This is the latest chapter on the 1275A plus engine build. We're gonna be installing the conrods along with the pistons. We're gonna install the gearbox and install the cylinder head along with the push rods and the rocker arms. So let's get into it. So well, first thing we're gonna do is pull the conrods out and have a look at them. We bought these from the specialist components in the UK. Now these are forged, they're also strengthened as well as lightened, so they are significantly stronger than the standard conrods. Now this is gonna give us optimum performance, especially down the track when this customer decides to increase the horsepower of his engine by turboing it down the track. So that'll be a later episode that we're gonna be doing, so stay tuned. It's not gonna be anytime soon, but when I do, it'll definitely be on my channel. Now, the first thing you want to do is look at the conrods and compare them to the originals. You want to make sure that they're exactly the same. If they're not, you need to make sure that whatever is different, you're able to compensate with whatever it may be, whether there be different bearings or even different pistons to offset it. Now, as you can see here, this one is completely offset. So we have a taper on one side as well as a taper on the other. Now, this will only go in the crankshaft one way. If we offset it the wrong way, it's not going to line up with the journals on the crankshaft shaft and the big ends as well so it'll only go in one particular way so come on down I'll show you where it is all right so I've just lent the block over onto my dead blow hammer now if you have a look directly down here where the crankshaft is you can see that the crank isn't directly in line with the bore so the bore is just down here where the piston goes up and down it might be a bit easier to see on this one but let's have a look so what you want to be doing is ensuring that this goes the correct way. If it's going to go the wrong way, it's going to be offset too far and it's not going to line up. So in our case, it's going to be going on like this. So we're going to have a taper facing the middle of the crankshaft with the taper facing the front of the crankshaft, which is where the harmonic balance is going to go. So it'll sit inside the block like this. Now we need to make sure that each one is either staggered the same way or it's the opposite way. But by the look of it, I reckon it's going to be opposite. So how it's going to seat is this one's going to face like this, and then the next one is going to face out like that. So Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is grab the conrods. Now, they do have markings on one side of them, and then on the other side, it doesn't have any markings at all. So what we're going to do is just grab a permanent marker, so just my Milwaukee texture here, and we're just going to put a line down the end. Now, it doesn't need to be completely straight, but at least this gives us a bit of an idea as to what side it goes on in case we get them confused. Also, we're going to be doing one at a time, so you don't want to be pulling these end caps off until you're ready to install them. So now that we've marked it, next thing we're going to do is we're going to separate the ends of them. So now that we have the top half of the conrod separated from the bottom half and we know which way it goes on, we can now start the assembly process. Now as you can see in the bottom of the big end cap, it has dowels down the bottom here. So that's what's going to locate it directly into the bottom of the conrod. So make sure that both of those come out. If not, if one stays in there, make sure it goes in the right way. So the next thing we're going to do is grab the piston and we're going to install the piston onto the conrod. Now it is a very simple process. All you need to do is make sure that you don't confuse any of the gudgeon pins with any of the other pistons. So whichever piston you take it off, make sure it stays with it. Now the gudgeon pin is what holds the conrod to the piston. All you're going to do is slide it in through one side here. Once it decides to slide in, we're then just going to line it up directly in the middle and then we're just going to push it all the way through. You should be able to do this with your hand and not use any tools and that's it. That's how you install it. It is quite simple. Some cars you need to heat up the piston or even the gudgeon pin to push it out. Some of them have circlips on either side that hold it in but these are just floating so this movement here is completely normal. Now that we've done one, we can go and start the reassembly process for the rest of them. So what we're going to do is also make a marking on the bottom of the conrod and also on the bottom of the BN cap to make sure that we realign them with the exact one that it came off with.
so now we have all the pistons assembled to the conrods we can now go and grab the big end bearings and we can install them on either side of the conrods so we're just going to grab our razor blade we're going to give it a little slit down here and then we're just going to separate them and put them on each one now like we did before we're just going to get a light film of oil and we're going to lubricate each side of them as we go to install them now what i normally like to do is just assemble them on the conrods first and then do the caps afterwards so we just grab our tub of oil and we're just going to give them a little bit of oil on each one just before we install them make sure you put the oil on both sides of the bearing shell itself Now inside the packet of the ARP bolts that came with a set of instructions, we either need to do the stretch method, which is this here. So when you are putting a bolt under stress, it is physically stretching the length of it. So it needs to be 50 to 55 thou of an inch stretched. Or if we don't have that, we're gonna be tightening it to 30 foot pound and we're gonna use the fastener assembly lubricant, which is the blue tub right here. So we're going to lubricate the threads of each of the Conrod bolts. So now comes the fun part. Because we're doing it on my toolbox, we're just gonna walk the block all the way over here to the edge, and then we're gonna lean it on its side. Whoop, there we go. All right, so slight change of plan. I'm going to put the gearbox on a crate, and then we're gonna put the block on top of it, which will make it a lot easier to install them. Once they're installed, we can then remove the block, flip it back upside down, and then connect up the connecting rods to the block. Alright, so nice and easily on the block, we're going to be facing the crankshaft facing upwards, so the slit is going to face the top. Now we can start the reassembly process. Remember as well that the pistons are off centre, so we want to make sure that they are starting to face inwards for the first one, then outwards for the next one, so forth and so on. Now, like we were saying before, we need to offset the piston rings as well, so I'm going to set the first one to the 10 o'clock position. The second piston ring is gonna be at the two o'clock position. And then the final third ring, we're going to offset at the six o'clock position for the top ring at the bottom. And then the second ring at the bottom here, we're gonna offset to the 12 o'clock position. Once your piston rings are now in position, we are then going to start the installation process. So we're gonna slide it all the way down through here. Once it starts to seat, and sits against the first ring, we are then going to put our piston ring compressors around. So once it is tight and the piston is square in line with the blocks. So you wanna make sure that this is 90 degrees to the block. That way you can confirm that the conrod is exactly in where it needs to be and it's not gonna be at 180 degrees or even 90 degrees. You wanna also make sure that each piston you install the exact same way as the previous one. That way you can confirm that when you go to put the bolts in each end, the lines are going to line up. Now this is my trusty piston installing tool. It is just an old wooden handle off an old hammer. So I've got that and I've had this for probably a good 10 years. Every single piston I've ever done, I've used this tool to install it. Now you wanna make sure that the item you are hitting with is going to be softer than the item that you are pushing in. That way this will cop the damage and the top of the piston won't. So all you're gonna be doing is getting the punch drift, or in my case, the block of wood, and we're just gonna tap it home just nice and easily. You wanna make sure that when you're going all the way in, that none of the piston rings come out and that the piston ring compressor stays in its spot. If it doesn't, you need to start again and push the piston out. All right, so you probably saw a bit of timber flying off there. I'd much prefer timber to be flying off than chunks of the top of the piston. Now that one is installed, we can then go and install the remaining three pistons. Thank you. 
Now upon the installation, one of the bearing shells came out, but that's fine because we can refit it whilst it's in here. So what we need to do is just push this piston down so that way it's not sitting on the crankshaft and then we can just roll it into position. Make sure that if you need to roll it into position that the tab lines up with where it needs to be. So all we're going to do is just slide it on top, move the conrod back a little bit and then we're just going to rotate the bearing all the way around until it goes home. Now if it doesn't line up 100% you can just grab your hammer or the end of your hammer should I say and just give it a tap until it lines up but make sure also that it lines up with the tab and then we can rotate the crankshaft back around to where it was and then put the end caps on. Now we can start the reassembly process. So make sure that the caps line up with the line as well as the dots. So they are opposing each other. So the first one will face backwards like this, then the next one will go across and so forth and so on. Make sure we also apply the lubricant to each of the threads before we install it and tighten each bolt to 30 foot pound. Don't forget also we need to reassemble the big end bearing. So get a little bit of oil, smear it on either side of the shell then slide the shell into the bearing cap. All right, once she's home, then you can start the reassembly process. Now that we've got all the bolts tightened for the big end bearings, we can then go and rotate the crankshaft around to make sure that she's moving freely and we're not gonna have any implications down the track. So remember, it will be a bit stiff to begin with, only because the new pistons haven't moved inside the cylinders before, so they'll need to obviously wear in. So we're just going to rotate it around a couple of times just to make sure that she's moving nice and freely. All right, so I'm going to leave it at that. Now we just need to reinstall these dowel pins. So there is a marking right here and one right here. So that's where they're going to be going before we reinstall it to the gearbox. Now they are of two different lengths. So the shorter length is going to go into the block and the longer length is going to go through to the gearbox. Now to speed this process up, I'm going to use the two nuts that go on each of the threads. We're going to lock them together and then we're just going to wind it in using the method I showed you to remove the cylinder head bolts on the removal process. And while it's in the upside down position, I'm just going to give this a quick wipe over to make sure that there's no leftover oil residue on here before we apply the gasket between the block and the sump. All right, we'll go clean up the gearbox, then we can install the block. Now, one of the things that we need to ensure that we replace is this O-ring here. I have seen and heard of a couple of people leaving this O-ring out. This is what feeds the oil pump. So this comes straight from the sump through this feed pipe and then goes straight to the block, which then goes straight to the oil pump itself. Without having this in there, you're going to have a very bad time. You're going to start the engine. It's not going to get oil pressure. The oil pressure light's going to stay on the dash. And if you don't catch it in time because the globe's blown or it's not connected properly, you're going to destroy your engine within a matter of about 15 minutes especially after you've just rebuilt it so make sure you renew this o-ring here as well as clean both surfaces before we apply the new gasket
So, unwrap it. And we get it out of the way. Sweet. Now, this was actually purchased from Mini Sport Australia. So I don't know if you can see the sticker there, I'll zoom in, but that's where we purchased it from. So this one is ready to go. Pretty much, we can install it straight away with minimal effort. So I'll just take that sticker off before we go any further. That way it's going to seal properly, but also it's not holding up any of the ore galleries or even coolant jackets. All right, so, okay. All right, so we just flip that around. And then we're just going to get the cylinder head and we're just going to line it up with where it needs to be. Once it's lined up, it'll just slide directly down on there, just like that. Now, before we go any further, we need to see if the push rods are going to fit back in here or if we need to take the cylinder head back off. Now, the push rods will only go in one way. So at the end, we have a ball, which is gonna sit in the bucket, which is the cam follower. So it's gonna sit in there like this. And then the rounded end here is going to sit in the top of the rocker shaft. So that'll slide directly down in there. Once it comes to a stop, that's exactly where it needs to sit. Now, I did take them off in order, so we can just reassemble them the same way. And they're all gonna sit at different heights because the camshaft is in a different position. One of the last things we're gonna do is the ignition timing. The reason it's gonna be one of the last things is because I'm waiting on an engine plate to come because the customer wanted an alloy plate to go on the front, which was also coming from the UK. So now that the push rods are in, we can get our other bolts and we can start reassembling them. Now, a good thing to do is if you're not sure where the bolts go, put them all in their holes so that way all of the bolts are at a standard height or pretty much the same height all the way along and this will give you a good indication as to where they go and if you've done it in the right order. Now, because we still have a little bit of the ARP bolt lubricant, I'm going to take them out, put a little bit on the threads, we're gonna wind it in, and then we're gonna torque it up. Okay, so as you probably saw, my son was just in here. He did shit himself, so I did have to go and clean him up. And also being a 29 degree day here in Western Sydney, we did spend a bit of time outside. So that's why now the door is closed in the garage and we're getting back to work on the Mini. So with the cylinder head, there are four studs that go in here that we do need to tighten up as well. I don't have the original studs because the customer has the original head. So I'm gonna get those off in this week. Then next episode, we can install and tighten up the cylinder head bolts. For now, I've just got them loosely fitted. I'm gonna put a rag over here. That way, between now and the next episode, when you see it, there's not gonna be any dust or debris get inside the engine. Always a really good habit to get into is that if you are doing any sort of engine work to your car, or even an exhaust system, an intake, a turbo, whatever it may be, place a rag over the top of it just for peace of mind knowing that no debris is gonna get in there. Even though we're gonna install the clutch cover for now, and then next episode, we'll get onto reassembling the entire thing. All right, so we have the rag fitted on top of the engine to make sure that no dust or debris gets in there. And this is our new clutch cover gasket. I'm just gonna be applying the same sealant to the end of it like we did with the sump, and then we're going to refit it. Now, between the gearbox and the block, there are these little tabs. This is a paper gasket that goes between the block and the gearbox when you sandwich it shut. So all you wanna to do to make sure that it still seals properly is make sure that you cut these off. So just grab a razor blade and just slide it all the way across on both sides. That way it's completely flush with it. So 
now that we have applied the sealant, we just need to make sure that both surfaces are clean. So I'm just gonna stick this on the ground and give the block and gearbox one more quick wipe over. That'll just make sure that we have a good, nice sealing surface, and that way it's not going to have any oil or grease on it and prevent it from sealing. Now, before we put it on, we need to put the primary gear on the crankshaft. Make sure we have that spacer washer there, which we do. So we just grab the primary gear and that's just gonna slide on directly just like this. Now make sure it engages all the way and that way you know that it's all the way home. So the bearing that's sitting down here, you need to make sure that's all right. Because this has been replaced before and I've gone through and tested everything, it is fine. If it's not, you need to make sure that you replace it. Now, each of the bearings will have a specific cone. So there is a cone inside here, the clutch cover. There is a circlip you need to take out and then you get a punch down in this small hole just here and then you can drive it out or even just use a puller. Same with this bearing here as well. They are coated to each one. So if you destroy the bearing, you need to remove the cone in order to make sure that the new one fits properly. So don't try and mix and match each of the bearings with different cones. Now is the time for the reassembly. So as you can see also, I have removed the primary gear seal. We're going to reinstall the new one. Just remember though that it does not bottom out whatsoever. So when you push it home, you wanna make sure that you only push it in so it's flat in line with this surface and not go too far. Otherwise it's gonna go inside the vehicle. It does have a stop on the end of the primary gear just here, which will prevent it going any further, but just for safe measure, make sure that it's in line with the outside of this edge here. So you just wanna be nice and gentle and just guide this on really easy. There is a dowel pin down the bottom, so you can just make sure that it goes on and doesn't have any resistance. That pretty much just fell straight in. Now we can grab the bolts, go around and tighten them all. All right, so we just grab our bolts out of here. Now remember they are two different sizes, so we just need to make sure that we install the right ones in the right spot. Now, like I was saying before, if you're ever unsure, try and fit it in there. If you can get all of the bolts situated in their holes at the same depth, then you know that you've done it right. If they're not sitting at the same depth, then chances are it is incorrect. So you probably didn't see, but two of these bolts have actually stripped out inside the gearbox. Because the gearbox is made of alloy, it's very common for bolts to be over tightened like this. So there's one here and there is also one here we need to tap. So what I'm gonna do is on the next episode, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to drill and install a new thread and therefore we can keep going with the build. So until next time guys, stay COVID safe and we'll see you next time on Tomo's Tune-Ups.